Hello guys, welcome to a new video and in this new video we are going to configure a site-to-site -side VPN with IPsec and a pre-share key. So we are going to configure these two routers and they are going to have a always-on VPN. You can say that it's an always-on VPN because it's always going to be working or connected. It's not like a remote like a remote VPN that you have to actually connect to the firewall and have a connection and whenever you disconnect then it's you lose the connection right so this was, this one is going to be an always on connection because it's not a remote connection it is a site to site connection using IP, ipsec and ipsec is a framework that bring or combine protocols together to make a secure internet connection and using hashing authentication group key exchange limited lifetime and also encryption and there's two flavors that you can use which is the authentication header and encapsulation security payload but the one that we're going to be using is going to be the encapsulation uh, the, the encapsulating security header um, so if you guys um, want to stick around for that and then after that after we configure the site to site VPN we are going to configure TACAX and <clears throat> TACAX it's a um, it's a server that you can configure um, where you can have usernames and username and passwords over over here configured or accounts configured, and so you can access the routers um, or any other devices that need access. So, TACAS provides um, those users with authentication, um, accounting, and also authorization, uh, which are the triple A. <clears throat> So we are going to go ahead and also configure that. And guys, this is for the, um, if we go back to the exam topics, this is for the CCNA security topic, exam topic. And we are going over secure access, which is configuring um, administrative access on a Cisco router using TACAX. So that's what we're going to do. And then, and we are also going to configure a site-to-site -side VPN with a pre-share key um, authentication in Cisco routers. Okay, so if you guys are on the way to taking this this exam, you can go ahead and check out my channel. But I have a lot of tutorials on the CCNA security exam and how to pass it. So let's go ahead and and start with this video. Um, I already have the two routers open over here, and I have not configured any interfaces or anything like that. But let me see something. Okay, router over here. This one looks like it was um, pre-configured for some reason. So what we could do is erase um, a star config, and then we can just do a reload. And while that is reloading, we can just go ahead and configure this router over here. So let's go ahead and config T. Let's give it a host name of router two. Um, after that, we're going to kick zero zero. Configure the IP address of, of sorry, 200.1.1.2 slash 24. Now shut down. And then we are going to go to QGAP01. I want to have an IP address of 192.168.1.1. Now shut down. Okay. So we have configured the two interfaces. Now I want to configure the interface for the TACAX server. And for this TACAX server, I'm using the GNS3 appliances of GNS GUI. I'm going to add a link to the appliance so you can go ahead and download it and add it to the GNS3 if you want to go ahead and follow me. So I'm going to, on this TACAX server, I'm going to configure a an IP address and the IP address is going to be the way that you configure an IP address over here. It's going to be ifconfig interface zero, and then you configure, and then you tell it which IP address you want to configure over here. That one, that two. Then the net mask, which is two five five two five five two five five that zero. And then we are going to add a route add default gateway of. which is the IP of the router 2 right here. 
and now we should be able to ping 192.168, that one, that one, which is router 2. There we go. So we are able to ping router 2 over here. So that means that we have a connection and it is working correctly. So now let's go ahead to router um, 1 over here. And from router 1, we need to configure um, Gigabit00 with this IP address and also router 1 with this IP address over here. So it looks like it's still, looks like it's done. Let's go to config T. Let's give it a host name of router 1. Let's give it a, configure this interface. We have an IP address of 200, that one, that one, that one. 255.255.255.0 Now shut down The interface Gigabit01 Going to have an IP address of 172.16.1.1 Now shut down Then after that we should be able to Go ahead and ping uh, My Windows device which I, I think I already configured this IP address so if we go and do ping there we go i'm able to ping my windows computer and um, one fell because of the arp um because arp try was trying to figure out the ip address to mac address and he found it and then we were able to ping it now let's see if we're able to ping 200 that one that one that two which is router two the first one fails because we were trying to get that MAC address to IP address and we did. So we have a connection over here as well. So now what we need to do is we going to start configuring or implementing the site to site VPN with a pre-share key. Um, so the first thing that we need to do is create an IP access list and it's going to be an extended access list. Now we are going to name this um, our actually site to site our two so it's going to be side to side to r2 because it's going to r2 that's how i'm naming it you can name it whatever you want now we're going to permit an ip address from the source of 172.16.1.0 that 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 walk our mass of 00 000 255 because it is a walk our mass and the destination is going to be 192.168 that one, that zero, which is this one over here, slash 24. There we go. Now we exit, and then after that, what we need to do is we need to configure a transform set, and this is going to define authentication, encryption, and also the tunnel. So let's go ahead and do a crypto IPsec. Oops. Not crypt up, it's crypt crypto. Let's see uh, crypto crypt uh, there we go, crypto IPsec. Um, after IPsec we're going to call transform set and we're going to name it as strong. You can name whatever you want. Just remember that it is case sensitive, then we're going to use the ESP. Um, which is this encapsulating secure, what is it, encapsulating secure payload. That's what we're going to use. Um, we're going to use SHA and HMAC. Okay. And then for the, this is for the authentication. We're going to use ESP, SHA, and HMAC. And for the encryption, we're going to use ESP, AES, 256. That's the encryption. And then we're going to do the mode. And the mode we're going to use is tunnel because tunnel encrypts everything. So that's the mode that we're going to do. Then after that, we're going to do exit. So we now have to find the authentication, encryption, and the tunnel, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a crypto map. And what the crypto map does is that it combines the transfer set that we just created, the ACL that we created, and we're also going to give it a remote peer IP address, which is going to be 200.1.1.2 that one, that one, that So let's go ahead and do that You go to crypto 
um, crypto map and then you give it a name um, the name that we're going to give this is going to be router 2 map because this is the map the map to router 2 and then we're going to give it a sequence number which is 1 and then IPsec ISKMP okay and then from here you need to set the transform set it's going to be set to strong because that's the one that I created right we need to match it right here and then we need to set the um, the peer and the peer is going to be 192 uh, sorry 200 that one that one that two which is the IP address of router 2 over here that's the one that we want to um, configure the side to side VPN right okay so after we do the map what we want to do is um, we want to add the the ACL and the way they do that you do a match address and you give it the name of that access list that you have configured over here you paste it right there there we go then you exit and then after that after you do that we are going to configure the pre-share key the way you do that you do a crypto I say ISA KMP um, key Cisco one two three. That's going to be the pre-share key, and that key needs to be uh, the same on router two, um, because if it's not the same, we won't be able to authenticate. Okay, so Cisco one two three, and the address is going to be two hundred that one that one that two, right? Because that's where it is going. That's where we want to authenticate at that peer IP address, right? So after we do that. We need to go ahead and create a crypto policy. So we do crypto. I say ISA KMP policy. And we're going to use policy one. So over here, we going to want to use authentication. Why are we going to use pre key? Right? And then after that, we're going to do the encryption. What is the encryption that we're using? AES256. The hash, we're using SHA. And the group number that we're going to use is group number Tilfuhammer number two. And after that, you need to do the lifetime, and we're going to do the maximum, which is 86400. There you go. So now you want to go now to interface Gigabyte 00. And over here, we want to add the crypto map. And the crypto map that we want to add is going to be um, bar two map. There we go exit um, we can do do wr to save our configuration and that has been saved so now we need to do the same thing on router 2 um, so the first thing that I did was create an IP access list it's going to be an extended access list and we're going to call this site to site r1 because it is going to r1 and what we want to configure it needs to be the destination has to be this IP address, right? So if you do permit IP 192.168.1.0.255, and the destination now needs to be 172.16.1.0, basically the opposite of what you did on the other router. We're going to exit. So after we do that, we need to create the crypto um, crypto map, I believe. Let me see if I remember. Yeah, we need to do the actually we need to create the um, transform set before we do the map because when we do the map we need to add the trans the transform set. So let's do it strong. And the one that we're going to be using is going to be the same um, the same one that we used in router one, which was um, ESP SHA with HMAC. And the that's this is the authentication, and now the encryption that we're going to use is AES two five six. Okay, now from here we need to set the um, we need to s let me see. Nope, we don't need to set anything because that's for the map. Sorry for that. From here you need to do the mode, which is going to be tonal. There we go. Now we exit, and now we do the crypto map, crypto map, and we're going to give it a name. The name is going to be R one map. On capital, oops. Then we're going to give it a sequence of one, 
and we're going to use IPsec ISKMP and then after that you just press enter and we're going to set the transform set which is strong then we're going to set the peer IP address which is 200 that one that one that one and then we're going to match the address which is the ACL so from over here we're going to copy this and if you do a question mark you can see you can add an IP access list number or an access list name and we are going to add the name that, that is done and then after we do that um, what we need to do is we need to create the crypto key so crypto ISA KMP key so let's go one two three and then we're going to give it the address of 200 that one that one that one and after we do that we need to go ahead and create the policy so crypto I say KMP policy policy number one we're going to authenticate using pre-share key this needs to match um, to the router one the same configuration that we did and then the encryption needs to be AES 256 um, hash is going to be SHA group is going to be 2 lifetime needs to be the maximum so we did authentication pre-share key encryption hash group number and lifetime now after that we need to go to interface gigabit 00, zero. And we need to say crypto map the crypto map that we're going to be using which is not as strong it is i think it is r1 map what is the map there we go r1 map paste it right there and exit so from here let's see if i'm able to ping 192.168.1.1 that one, that one, or actually 172.16.1.1 that one, that one. um do ping so i'm not able to ping that ip address because i do not know um, this router 2 does not know how to get to that so what we need to do is we need to add a route so IP route and we're going to do IP route to 172.16.1.0 that, that that use 200.1.1.1 that one, that one, that one. and now we need to do a similar one thing over here it's going to be IP route Two one nine two that one six eight that one that one no, actually that one that zero send it to router two so now from router two now we should be able to ping that IP address there we go so now we're able to ping that IP address let's go ahead and save the, my configuration so my configuration has been saved so now let's see if we um see if we have a show crypto ipsec sa active do we not have active here looks like we do not so let's just leave it like that and as you can see we do not have anything running right now so what we want to do from this windows device Go ahead and open the command line and go ahead and ping ping 192.168.1.2 which is the IP address of the TACAC server and there we go so we are able to do that now let's go ahead and see what's going on and as you can see right here we have encrypt and, decry and decrypt three packets that means that site to site VPN it is working if you ping it again, we should be able to get four more. There we go. Now we have seven. So it is working the way we wanted it. It is encrypting and it's also decrypting. And also, if you want to see more stuff, what you can do is debug 
crypto engine package and that is going to um, packet that is going to turn on that crypto engine packet so if you go ahead and ping you're going to see that the traffic it is actually encrypted as you can see it is encrypting it you can see there's a lot of stuff that we cannot read um, because it is using the AES 256 um, encryption encryption and as you can see it is just a bunch of stuff that we cannot understand because that's the way that you want it you want it to be encrypted right so as you can see it is working correctly just the way we wanted it so that is great guys it is working and that's how you can configure in site to site IPsec VPN configuration or a always on VPN configuration with IPsec and ESP so now after that is configured we want to um, go ahead and configure the attack act server so let's go ahead to config T and the first thing let's go ahead and configure these router one first so from this router one the first thing that, that you want to do is going to be for both of, for, for both of the routers you want to create a username asker and then we want to give it a privilege of 15 right and then we can just configure the secret which is going to be Cisco one two three and it's going to be the same for router two so we can just go ahead and paste that right here um, so then after that what you want to do is go ahead and start the triple a new model okay <clears throat> so after you do that let's see if this one lets you okay so yeah now we're going to create a tagx server and we're going to call this server is going to be called tag serve that's going to be the name of the tagx server then after that you want to configure the ip address of the tagx server which is 172.192.168.1.2 that one right here okay now you press let me see address actually i need to do it needs to be not address and then the ip address you need to do ipv4 and then <clears throat> after that is done you need to go ahead and configure the tagx key which is going to be tagx key and that needs to be also that needs to also be configured in this tagx server that we're going to configure in a little bit so the key has been configured now after this we need to go ahead and go ahead and exit and do a triple a authentication um, and we want to log in with the authentication that we're going to be is going that we're going to be using that we, go, we are going to be using is going to be login and over here you can configure either a name so we can name this authentication or you can just use the default we are going to name it as um, admin and then after that what do you want to do is get the group because we are going to configure a group and the group is going to be tagx plus and then after that we are going to use local and what does this mean well this means that if we are we are configuring authentication which is going to be used for login and the group that we are configuring for this authentication that we're calling it it is the admin authentication and the group that we're using is tagx and if tagx is not available then we are going to use a local account and the local account is this one right here asker and the password is cisco123 okay so that is great um, after we do that what we want to do is just go ahead to the line v2y 024 and then for here what you would like to do is do a login authentication and the authentication that we're going to use is the admin because that's the one that we have configured there we go admin so that's great and then if you want to do a transport trans transport input and then from here 
you either want to set up to use only telnet only ssh or if you want to use all of them so since we're not using ssh i know it's not secure but we want to use telnet so let's go ahead and configure telnet and then exit and we can just do um, right to save our configuration so that is great now um, what we could do is configure router 2 as well with the same thing we did so triple a new model and then you want to do attack x server actually attack x server and then we can give it a name of tax or attack serve after that you want to do an IP address of 170, uh, 192.168.102 and then you want to do a key and it's going to be called tax key or tax x key we are, just, we are just going to call it tax well let's just do tax x key the same way that we did on the other router so tax x see if I got it right tax tax x key okay so that's good after we do that we need to go ahead and create triple a authentication we are going to use the login and then we're going to give it a name we're just going to call user for this one and we're going to do the group it's going to be tax x and if tax x is not available please use the login and I configure that right. Let's see authentication login user group tax x. Actually, not login, it needs to be local. There we go. Do wr. And I forgot something. Let's go ahead and add it to the line v2y 024 and login authentication. You send user, which is the what I call the authentication. And then if you want to do a transport input, you are going to be using Telnet. And let's go ahead and save it. Then after we do that, what we want to do is go ahead to this Windows device over here. So let's go ahead and open my Windows device. Let's go ahead to this Windows device and we have to go to 192.168.1.2 which is the TACX GUI server um, it is telling me that it's not secure but that's fine you still want to go ahead to that TACX GUI and from here you want to do a TAC GUI which is the username and the password is ABC123 and that's going to take me to this TACX server right here and if you can see um, it is encrypting everything I'm doing. Um, so if you open router 2 where we did the debug, you can see all the traffic going and it is um, encrypted. Okay. So what you need to do, the first thing you need to do, you need to create a device group. And as you can see, like I'm telling you guys, it, it keeps encrypting and decrypting. And you can see that we cannot um, see what's going on in the traffic because it is encrypted. So let's go ahead and add a group. Just call it admin. Set this default. TACX key is TACX key. Um, TACX key. The password is going to be Cisco 123. And we're now going to encrypt the password. Add device group. It has been added. Now we want to add devices. So we need to add two devices, um, which is router one and router two. So the first one needs to be router one, and it's going. It needs to go to the admin group. That's the only group that I have, and it's a default. This is going to be a slash twenty four. The IP address of router one is two hundred that one that one that one. The key is tacx key. We are now going to encrypt this password is Cisco123 for the enable password. Add device. Let's go ahead and add another device, which is router2. Let's 
going to go into the admin group. IP address 200.1.1.2 slash 20 slash 24. TACX key is TACX key. Enable password Cisco 123. We are now going to encrypt it. Add device. There we go. So we have two um, users right now. So if we go now, actually two devices. So now we need to go ahead and add a user. And we can just delete this user right now because we're not going to use it. Let's add a new one. Um, and this one's going to be router2. Um, it's going to go into default. This password is Cisco123. We're now going to encrypt it. The enable password is Cisco123. We're also not going to encrypt it either. That is added. Let's go ahead and add router1. It's going to go into the default group. Cisco123. Do not encrypt it. Enable password Cisco123. And do not encrypt this either. So that's great. So after we do that, let's go ahead and go into these TACX configuration. You see it is running right now. Let's go ahead and apply the changes. And we do not want to make a backup after applying because there is a bug and it won't work if we do that. So let's go ahead and apply it. So host 200, the one that two, already defined. <laughs> so let's go ahead and go into the devices. Something going on over here. So, hmm. So let's go ahead and go back into See what the error. Let's go ahead and stop it. Let's try to apply the changes. So it is saying that it is already defined. The two hundred, that one, that one, that two slash twenty four. Hmm. Let's go ahead and go into the devices. And let's go ahead and let's go ahead and just delete this one. Let's go ahead and apply changes. We probably cannot add two devices. Let's go ahead and test it. Success and apply. So it doesn't let me make two. Um, doesn't let me add two different devices. I guess I can only add one device, um, but that's fine. Let's go ahead and do it on all. So we can stop the debug. Okay, so it is it, it stopped with the debugs. So what we can do now, let's see if we're able to turn it into two hundred and one the one the one which is the IP address of router one. And let's go ahead and remote in with router one. Password Cisco one, two, three. So as you can see, um, we are able to remote in into router one using the username of um, router one. We should also, if we do a logout, oops. So if we do a logout, now we should be able then to remote in using router two because we're using both of them right now. So let's go ahead, give it a couple seconds. And after we test that it's working for router for router one, um, we are going to just add these router two to the devices um, and remove router one. So let me see, do a log. Logout, okay. Turn it again to it, and I use router 
to password Cisco one two three. There we go. So we're able to remote into router one using um, using router two username because we are able to remote in using both usernames. So that's great. So now since we know that it is working for router one, let's go ahead and configure the devices. Let's go ahead and edit this and give it our two IP address is this one. Apply the changes. Test success. Great. So now from um, let's go ahead and log out. If I know how to spell log out, so we are going to log out out of here, and let's from router one. Let's log into router two. Telnet two hundred that one that one that two. Username router. One Cisco. Oops. I did not I typed the incorrect password, so let's go and try it again. Router one Cisco one. Let's go ahead and try it again. Cisco one two three. Let's see if I enter the correct password. Mm. Try it again, router one Cisco one two three. So it's not letting me. Um, it's not letting me turn it into router two. Right. Let's go ahead and go to the devices again. Devices. Router one. Router two. Two hundred. The one. The one. The two. Admin. That's great. Users. Router two and router one. So it's 200, that one, that one, that two. Router one, Cisco one, two, three. And let's try router two then. Router two, Cisco one, two, three. So it is not letting me authenticate. Let's go ahead if we. We are able to authenticate with the local account. Cisco one two three. Okay, so it looks like it is not connecting with this um, TACX server. So one thing that we could do, since it is logging in with the local, it sounds like it doesn't have a connection with the TACX server. So if we go to router two and we do a show run. So we have triple authentication, login user. Let's see what else we have over here. See if we can find an error. So extended address IP before. TACX key. One two one six eight that one that two. That's correct. Hmm, okay. So it looks like it's not working for some reason. Let's go ahead and do ping 192.168.1.2. I'm able to ping the server. Um, so I'm not sure what's going on. Let me see. Do a debug. Is there a debug for the. Okay, yeah, it is one. Debug tactx authentication is on. So now. Let's see what's going on. Using server one and two one six eight one two. Okay. 
okay let's go ahead and do the username of router one Cisco one two three Indication fail. Looks like it is timing now, so it's not letting me log in timers out of seconds. Processing authentication start ID 15. Using this server. Huh, yeah, so I, I do not know why it is not working, but for some reason it's not. If you saw something that I did wrong, Go ahead and leave me a comment on this video below um, so I can take a look and make another video. But for now, since this video is getting a little bit too long, I'm going to go ahead and leave it here. And we have configured um, IPsec, site to site IPsec um, VPN or always on VPN. So if you guys like this video, go ahead and subscribe to my or go ahead and follow me on Twitter at CCNA Daily Tips. And if you do not have a Twitter account, hey, go ahead and create a Twitter account. I know you have an email somewhere. Um, go ahead and make a Twitter account and then follow me on Twitter. I post a lot of stuff from CCNA and also CCNA Security. So thank you guys for watching. Hey, and I'll see you in the next one, guys. Bye-bye.